to Haggai um, in the second year of King Darius's reign. The word of God came to Haggai and he shared with the people that was actually supposed to build the temple, but it was such a big job that they, um, they became dismayed. And the foundations were laid and they stopped building. They actually started working on their own homes and so on, paneled their own homes. And God gave him a word and said, listen, share with them. You, you, you say it's not time to build my house, but you're building and paneling your own houses. You're doing your own thing. God said, now come and do as I've called you to do. Now, in, in, in Haggai chapter 1, the last portion says that God actually stirred up within them. I'll read that last portion again before we go into the scripture for today. Said in verse 14, so the Lord stirred up, in chapter one, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Josedak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. And they came and began the work on the house of the Lord Almighty on the 24th day of the sixth month. So the first chapter ends in these people now understanding, hearing the word of God. And, and God actually stirred up within their hearts. He stirred up within their hearts a zeal to begin to do what he's called them to do. And um, last week I shared with you that it's not only for them there in the Old Testament. God is sharing with us that we can either be busy building our homes. We can either be busy chasing a lot of stuff, a lot of things, like Psalm 127 says that we do all of these things, but it's in vain. Everything you own will come and go. Hello? Everything. Everything you have now, you'll lose. Hello? It's only what God does, only the eternal that will remain. Yes? Yes? Sometimes we value things so much that we hold on to that, that God has to call us back to his priority so that we can truly see what he has in store and so that we can truly experience the grace and the favor of God on the works of our hands. Now in chapter two, if you can turn your Bibles with me to Haggai chapter two, and I'm gonna read for you from verse one, second installment in this short series on the book of Haggai. Now it says in verse one, in the second year of King Darius on the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, the son of Josedak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, ask them, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now, verse four, be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josedak, the high priest. Be strong, all ye people of the land, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Verse six, this is what the Lord Almighty says, in a little while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land, I will shake all the nations and what is desired by all nations will come and will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that every word that you've spoken is true and is yes, and it is amen, and it will stand firm. Every promise that you've made will not be overturned. It will remain and do exactly as you've promised it will. We pray, Lord, as we um, share your word this morning and as we receive what you give, we pray, Lord, that the promise that you've made, that your word would do as it was sent out to do, that in each and every heart this morning, through your spirit, your word would be made alive. And you would work in us and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 
Now, I'll be honest with you, there's, there's some sermons uh, or some uh, word of God that you get that you know is a bit of a challenge to give. I mean, if you speak to people like we did last week about, listen, don't be so busy with your own homes. You know, God is calling us back and saying, listen, you're paneling your own homes to come back. That's a pretty hard word. As a, as a minister, it's, it's, it's difficult to give sometimes. But you know, I mean, it's God's word, so you give it. But then you get a word like this morning that for these very, for these very uh, people, the, 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 they that were struggling to get building with God's house, His purposes, and God now renews that vigor inside of them and He encourages them to them, to those very same people is the ones that He actually gives these promises that we are reading this morning. Now, it says here in the second year of King Darius, so it's the same year that we're talking about of chapter one. It's just saying in the 21st day of the seventh month, the first chapter came on the first day of the sixth month. So this is not even two months after they, the, the, uh, uh, God addressed within them that they were building their own homes. Now on the 21st of the seventh month, he's actually now reminding them, first of all, bringing them back and reminding them about what they know what they've seen, what they've experienced. Listen to this. He said to, to Haggai, he said, speak to Zerubbabel, the son of Zealtiel, so speak to the governor, speak to Joshua, speak to the priest, and then he says, and also share with all the people and ask them this, verse three. Who is left who saw the house in its former glory? Now I wanna remind you, and your children know this very well, the young people in the congregations know this very well. There's so many times where we are reminded about what we have experienced in the past. Either a move of God or revival, a restoration, God reforming the church, bringing back some truths that we've lost along the way. And we look at times we've experienced where the grace of God was so evident within the church and the presence of God was so evident in the body, in his body, that things just, it was just moving and, and people moved into ministry and wherever somebody shared the word, something happened. We experienced the joy, the glory, the presence of God in different ways, shapes and forms. In different denominations, you see how God moves in each and every one of them as he brings his church together, and we remind it of these things. But even more closer, sometimes we're reminded in our families, we're reminded of some very significant moments where God just grabbed us and plucked us out of the fire, where he just moved with us and, and reminded us again about our freedom and the joy that there is within uh, God's presence and, and what he does. So we're reminded about these wonderful moments with him. And sometimes we portray that in our children as though whatever they are experiencing now, it's almost like, it's not good enough. You know what, in my day, this is what happened. This is how we had prayer meetings. This is how we prayed. This is how we spoke to our parents. This is how we did when God moved. This is what we felt. This is what the church was like. And we're reminding them about these things, which is great encouragement. But sometimes it's almost as if this question that God is asking them, who of you is left that saw this house in its former glory? There was a weight of God's presence that they were reminded of. God's presence that they could remember. This is what the old temple was about. This is even what the tabernacle was about. This is how God moved with us in the desert. These are the promises he made. And at this stage, they are looking at whatever they're building now. They're seeing the foundations. They've got the zeal. God restored it within them. But they're almost looking at this foundation, these foundations of the new temple. And they're starting to build and they're starting to work. But for them, it looks like it's nothing compared to what they really remember. Now you've got to ask yourself, you've got to ask yourself, what are we remembering? What are we reminded of if we think of God's move in our past, in our homes, in our lives, in this his house. What are we reminded of? And God asks them, does it not look to you? How does it look to you now? He says, does it not seem to you like nothing? 
Look at the house of God and what God is establishing. And please remember last week, those of you that, that weren't here last week, just go, you, you, can, you can fill in those gaps uh, um, on the app or on, on, on YouTube. You can, you can check that again. But in, in chapter one, he says, listen, this, this house is not your house, it's his house. And we are now his house. God is building this house and we're looking at the church and sometimes it seemed to us as if it's nothing. Nothing is happening. Everything is laborsome. It's not coming, it, it, it's not uh, uh, what we would like it to be. The foundations are too small. It, 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 we, are, we are longing for times of old. God, I wish I could be back there again when we experienced that. We prayed through the night. or, or uh, God, you, you were moving so within our hearts. I just couldn't stop spending time with you. At, at the moment, Lord, it feels like everything is almost dull and nullified. The foundations are small, and it seems like nothing. That's the first portion of the word God gave to them. It doesn't seem like nothing if you compare this with the old temple. But now in verse four, then is, this is where God actually steps in and addresses them. He says, listen, this is what you remember. This is what you're reminded of. I don't know. There's, there's 10 different denominations uh, uh, um, in this congregation, just if you didn't know that. So I don't know what you've experienced and what your experience was, but I know this. God builds his church. That I know. And I know if you sing in a book or without a book, I know that God's presence brings the weightiness, the glory. That I know. I know if you clap your hands or not, God's presence is the difference maker. Amen? If you jump up and down or not, I always say you can jump as high as you can, just walk straight when you come down. The glory of God rests upon us. Don't expect to the, the person next to you that got, uh, they, they've got a different experience than you. Don't expect them to talk about the same glory, to hunger for the same glory. We should hunger for His glory, not just the remembrance of what we've experienced in the past. I don't know what you're reminded of, but I know this sometimes. Seasons like these... And if I'm hearing correctly, it's almost as if the body of Christ, not Kingsway Church, the church in general, almost feels like what we are experiencing now. It's struggling. We, 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 we're struggling to get off the ground. It's almost like nothing compared to what I've experienced a little while ago or what I'm remembering. And here God steps in in verse 4, and he starts giving instruction, and he says, but, but now. But now, bring your thoughts. Don't just be in your past. Don't just reminisce about the things that happened. He says, but now, what should we do? He says, but now be strong. Zeri Babel. He's speaking to the governor. He says, be strong, Joshua, son of Yozadak, the priest. He's speaking to those that should minister. He says, be strong if you should govern, be strong. If you must minister, be strong. And then he goes further and he says, be strong to all the people. He's, he's speaking to all them. He says, be strong, all you people of the land. God is not only saying, be strong, Piet. God is not only saying, be strong, worship leader or Cell group leaders, God is saying, be strong, all the people of the land, be strong. Why should we be strong? Why would God say be strong? Okay, I see a, very, a lot of vague um, looks. Let me explain this to you. God knows everything. This is theology in 101. Yes? Oh, you, you're all good? So if God says be strong, it means... That we are struggling to be strong. <laughs> yes? God's not going to say to you, come on, be strong and courageous if you are strong and courageous. But the moment you feel like this house, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, there, there must be something more. I'm struggling to see what God wants to do. I'm struggling to see that these foundations are going to be a glorious temple. I'm struggling to see that the, that the body of Christ that he's building now within our city, within Perth, within Western Australia, I'm struggling to see that this glory 
will be as beautiful as the glory that I remember. And he's saying, be strong. Be strong if you should govern. Be strong if you should minister. Be strong, all you people. But this is where it gets interesting. Listen to this. He says, be strong, all you people of the land. Declares the Lord and, and work. Be strong and work. They are building a temple. They're not going to say be strong and rest. Be strong and work, says the Lord. Listen to what he's saying. He says, be strong and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. He gives an instruction for us to be strong and do the work that he's given here. He's given them the job to build this temple, to make sure that his home, his house is built. He's saying, be strong and build Do the work for I am with you. And then in the very next verse, he says, this is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. It's not about the temple being built. It's not even about the work. What did he covenant with them when they came out of Egypt? And then he says, and my spirit remains among you. This is what God covenanted with them. God covenanted with them. He said to them, he promised them, I will be with you. That is the covenant. That is the unchanging covenant. It's not about whatever we are doing or called to be doing now. Listen to this in Exodus. In Exodus chapter 29, it says this in verse 45, then I will dwell among the Israelites and be their God. They they will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of Egypt so that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. Can you remember another place in the Bible where God said, be strong and courageous? Joshua. Remember when we did Joshua? How many times he said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Why? Because I am with you. He said to the whole of Israel, I will dwell among you. Be strong because I will dwell among you. I will be with you. So why can we be strong? Because God is with us. They could be strong. Even in the desert, they could be strong. In front of, well, they they weren't very strong in front of the Red Sea. But after they went through it, they felt pretty strong, yes, because God was with them. And the more and more they saw that God was with them, Joshua, God said to Joshua, Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. So because I'm with you, be strong and courageous. Now God is through Haggai giving them this word. Don't look at the foundations and think it's not good enough. Don't look at how this is smaller than the previous. You don't know if this is going to work. He says, remember this. This is what I've covenanted with you. I will be with you. Let's say, Piet, yes, but they are building the temple. But just remember this. Where is the temple? Remember last week, we are his temple. Jesus said to his disciples over and over and over again, John 14, John 15, John 16, over and over again, he told them, it is good for you that I go because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit with you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We will make our dwelling within you. All of these verses, Jesus reminded them that I will be with you. If we really understand that God is building a house whose glory, which glory will be greater than the former, we will stop looking in our rear view mirror, reminiscing about the past, hoping that those times will return. Oh, I wish we could again have like, no, no. Here he reminds them, he said, listen, you've got to look forward because what I will do here will be greater. Read with me, verse five says, this is what I covenanted with you when I came out of Egypt and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and dry land. I will shake all the nations and what is desired by all nations will come and will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. Verse nine, the glory of the present house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Let me ask you, when last did a thought, a spiritual depth within your spirit, a burning within your heart, remind you that God is busy building a temple which glory will be greater than anything we've known. 
No, Peter, I don't know. I, th- I think some, some of the times in history, remember when Billy Graham moved through the whole world. Remember uh, how many people came to the Lord then. I don't think God can do that again. Turn your eyes back to facing what God wants to do and don't just look in your rearview mirror at what he's doing because the glory of God will always increase. It says in the Bible that that sin will uh, be more and more and darkness will, will be more and more in the last days, but it says that the glory of God will be even more glorious. The dark will become darker and the light become lighter because God's people that are carrying God's glory is not convinced that the body of Christ roaming the earth now is going to be an experience more glorious things than ever before. I'm so glad you guys are happy. Let me share this with you. Isaiah even prophesied and says the kingdom of God will advance and will always keep advancing. Nothing will stop the glory of God. And because of that, the people that you have around you, look around you, the young people growing up in this church, the young people growing up in congregations all over this place and all over this city will experience things that we have not seen yet. Hello? Hello? Can you see how we struggle to see? The church is so divided. God is dealing with that. How? Read. One smile will shake. What do you think God is doing? What do you think he shared with us Hebrews last year? From the very beginning, God has said, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. What happens when everything is shaken? The things that are temporary falls down. Walls between denominations are falling down. And if they're not falling down, they will fall down. Because the body of Christ, in Jesus, we are one. We are one. You might say, Peter, I don't know if I want to be one with them all. Get over yourself. Seriously, he is God. Yeah, but they don't do everything right. So, And neither do you. They don't have the full revelation yet, Piet. Oh, yes, and you do. We are so busy with what we have experienced. Looking back that what we see around us, we look at our kids and we're trying to get them just to survive their times. Where's the Joshua's of old? Where's Zerubbabel? Where's Joshua, son of Josedak? You know why we struggle to see God move in this, young, in, in, in this young generation the way he wants to move? And please don't think I'm thinking this move or that move. I don't care how God moves, and, 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 just as long as it's him. He can move how he wants to move. Yes? And guess what? He's not going to ask you or me how we should be moving. Just so, for in case you want, we're wondering. He's going to move the way he wants to move. You see different things happening in different people. But this word, as true as it was for them, the glory of the the former house will be surpassed by the glory, the weightiness, the presence of God. Because God's people will stand. Why? Because he's saying stand, be strong. And courageous, remember what I'm doing. The children growing up in our homes should have the capacity to carry and search and seek the glory of God above all. We are trying to get our kids just to attend church. We are trying to get our kids just to survive through this season and, 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 and for them growing up so that we can just keep them going to church up until their 20s. Let me share with you, there's a time that is approaching that is here now where our kids will drive us. You know why? Because the temple, the house God is building, you might say, but but you're, they were, they were building, they were building such a glorious temple. Jesus said, the house that I'm building is not one built with mortar and bricks. It is built as living stones being added in the house, being added together. And we will carry God's glory within our hearts. We we wouldn't have to go to people to find the word of God. His word will be in our hearts and in our mouths. And what should we be doing? We should be trusting him 
Be strong and work. So what work do you think we should be doing? I said this last week, I'll say it again. We are not building a church. So don't worry. We're not starting a building project. We're not, I'm not setting you up to give money at the end of the service. Whew. A few of you can now breathe. Whew. Okay. God is building His house. His house are built in different places all over the city. People that think differently. People that do things a little bit differently, but God is building his house. He's establishing his house. What do we see when we look at it? Do we see small foundations? Do we just see what's wrong? Do we do, are we just trying to survive? Or are we seeing on these foundations, it is not the little that you see here, but the foundation of Christ Jesus and the eternal promise that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you and my spirit will live within you and I will build my house. Jesus said he will build his church. The children growing up in our homes this generation growing up around us. We, his people now, not supposed to wait for something else to happen. He's saying, be strong and work, for I am with you. Jesus said this in John. He said, it's good that I, send, that, that I go so that I can send the Holy Spirit to be with you. God is building his church by building each and every single congregation, group of people that belong to him. But not only that, God is building his church by establishing your home spiritually. Are we busy building his house? Or are we busy building our homes? He's saying that the glory will surpass the former glory. And then the very last portion it says in in uh, in verse 9 it says and in this place I will grant peace in this place I will grant peace you know just just before we get to this very last portion God said to them this he said he said you're looking at this and, you, and you're wondering will this ever be so great it looks like nothing to me and then he says to them he said just remember the silver is mine the gold is mine. I'm going to shake everything. He said, and what you need, what you need, you will have. Listen to this. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord. Verse 9, the glory of the present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord. In verse 8, it says, um, I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come and will fill this house with glory. He said from the very beginning, God knows everything, yes? Do you think God has the ability to build his house in 2021 just as he had the ability to build his house as he prophesied through the prophet Haggai? Please, don't just answer. Think a little bit. Do you really believe that God is capable of building his house with the people that serve him now? Because let me give you the answer. God, Jesus said, I will build my church. Look around you. Look around you. Think about all the other congregations in this city. God is building his church. And God is bringing his people back. He's raising up or let me use the words that is used in chapter one. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, stirred up the spirit of Joshua, stirred up the spirit of the people. There's a stirring up taking place. Lisa, there's a stirring up taking place. There's quite a few of you that are experiencing in your heart an expectation, an excitement that you don't have an explanation for. There's an excitement in your spirit, but it's not because you've got a new job. 
You don't know why. You've just experienced one of the worst years that you have before. You don't actually know why there's something within your spirit. But you know it's there. I believe that we are in a time as when Haggai prophesied. But God is saying, take your eyes off of just the things you remember. But God is saying, I am building my temple. I am building my house. And the glory of this house will be greater than the previous glory and the glory of the former house. But that means that we are going to have to embrace his instruction. So what is his, is his instruction? What did he say? He said, be strong. Be strong. Do not be afraid. Be strong. Moms and dads, look at me. Be strong. Don't be afraid for your kids. They're not just going to survive. They're going to they're going to be ruthless for the king. They're not just going to stand. They're going to expand his kingdom. Guys, look at me. I'm going to say that again because I can sense in my spirit. You're struggling to believe it. Your kids are not just going to remain. They're going to see his kingdom expand. If some of you are sitting here that they're going to see some things in your kids you're going to stand amazed at the boldness of your children. God is building this house. I'm not talking about Kingsway. You know that by now. He's building His church in this generation. Do not think that it's just a small little thing or as Scripture says, nothing. He's building His house. Be strong. No. What he said, not what you're hearing. Yes, but the kids nowadays, no, no, no. Hear from him, ask him, God, what are you saying about my children? What do you want me to teach them? What should they be ready for? We say so many things that we just, we hear it from somebody else, then we just repeat it. How does God feel about this young generation growing up? We better get in line with what God is doing. Number two, work. What is the work we should be doing? Jesus said to his disciples, go. First he said, I'm with you. All authority has been given to me. Now go and make disciples. Be strong and work. Why? For God is with us. We don't have to build this house, figure out a way to do something new. We have to just allow Him to speak to us so that we can do what God wants done in this time, in this year, with these, His people. Yes?